Hey there once again YouTube, how you doing today? I haven't done a video in a while so I decided to just make a quick one just about recent events that have been going on in Hawaii in the United States. Hope you guys are doing well. First off, if you haven't already, please bookmark my website. There's a link in the description box below right under my email address. It can teach you how to access, how to analyze, how to even find all that seismic and GPS data to monitor volcanoes and tectonic hazard areas all throughout the United States and even parts of the world too. It also contains hundreds upon hundreds of plots. I'm probably going to say thousands of plots created by myself to show examples of many different types of earthquake swarms and events. So, today again I'm going to be talking about Hawaii and a few of the earthquakes that have occurred on the west coast of the United States. On the west coast in Oregon there's currently an ETS, Episodic Tremor and Slip, episode occurring. That is where the two plates, the Wanafiga plate, which is subsiding under the North American plate, that is where they sort of start to move more and they start to grind more but the tremor the slip see if we didn't have a lot of plate lubrication down there that's one of the main theories and it probably is correct that's one of the main theories out there right now about why we have such a strong ets tremor event uh, which is tremor and slip tremors detected by seismic stations kind of looks like a low frequency harmonic tremor but it's not you can tell it's a little bit different and the slip is detected by GPS stations. Those two together is how they record ETS events. Now, the reason why we have that is because of the lubrication of our plates. If they were less lubricated, and they're, I don't know what it's lubricated with. I, I'm not a professional on that. That's for damn sure. Um, I don't know what it's lubricated with. I don't know if it's magma that it's lubricated with. That could make sense somewhat for the type of tremor that we're seeing, the tectonic tremor. Maybe it is magma because, you know, there's magma everywhere down there, guys. Even the friction of the plates causes magma to boil up to the surface sometimes. But the ETS, you know, if we didn't have that plate lubrication, excuse me, I think that we'd be seeing a lot more magnitude 6 and magnitude 7 events. For example, before the Japan earthquake, you know, the magnitude, what was it? Magnitude 9.3, I believe it was. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Maybe it was a 9.1, the one in March 2011. That one was a very strong earthquake and had many, many force shocks. There were many magnitude 7s just before the earthquake hit. You could tell seismic activity was leading up to a very, very large event. However, here, that might not happen. We, the only warning we might get before a megathrust event along the Cascadia subduction zone is likely a strong ETS event. And right now, as of right this second, it's kind of calmed down. It keeps going off and on, off and on. Even the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network has noted that this recent ETS event is extremely strange. It's just weird. First, it started in the Olympic Peninsula and then stopped. And then started again and stopped. Then we didn't see it for like a good week or two. I don't know the exact time frame. We didn't see it for a good week or two or so. And then all of a sudden, boom, it just starts going crazy on the west, uh, yeah, the west coast of Oregon. And right now, it's somewhat calmed down. So why is it, why are we seeing these random bursts of ETS events? Usually, it slowly leads up to one, reaches its peak over about a month or two. Don't know the exact time frame of an ETS. Um, usually around maybe a month or two, probably. And it leads up and then kind of dies down. I mean, it may act a little different than that, but this one's very weird. It makes some wonder. Obviously, ETS is happening. Tremor and Slip is happening. But why? Is this a new episode? Because we're supposed to have one in the summer of 2019. Could this be a precursor ETS event? That is what I think it could be. Let me know what you think down below. Now, here's the state of Hawaii. Uh, as of 11.35 a.m. Pacific Time, May. 21st, 2019. Let me turn on terrain just real quick. We see eight earthquakes have been reported. Now, I must say, the USGS earthquake map is not reporting as many earthquakes as HVO is. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is an offshoot of USGS. Yes, it is USGS, basically. But HVO is reporting a lot more earthquakes. Here, let me show you an example. So, in the past seven days, total, seven days, all magnitudes for Hawaii, we see 80 reported earthquakes out of 2026. Remember, 2026, let me zoom to world. 2026 would be the amount of earthquakes that occurred in the whole world. Notice that, 2026 of 2026. All right. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's Hawaii one more time. Notice something. Down here, we have a bunch of diamonds. What are these diamonds? Well, I did a blog post and a video recently about the DLP HFEs, which it really is not what they're called. I, get, I joined a, um, 
Earthquake Watcher Facebook group. And the head of the Facebook group used to be a top seismologist from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. You might have heard of him before, John Bedale. And another professional that's on there is Jackie. I forget her last name, but they know their stuff. Apparently, these diamonds, remember I talked about the DOPHFEs. They're not called DOPHFEs. That's just the name that I dubbed them. They are a type of volcanic tremor. Apparently, uh, they're very, because, you know, I'm used to low-frequency harmonic volcanic tremor. I'm not used to the ones that these are. Now, I did talk to them, and according to the depth and where these are occurring, it is highly likely that my theory that I posted in my blog post is correct. They did say, and these are professionals saying this, that it is possible, highly likely, that these tremor events that I've covered so many times, and they can last anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, they are signaling mass magma transport through the mantle plume conduit feeding the volcanoes in Hawaii. I am unsure where the magma is headed. Is it headed to Kilauea? Is it headed towards the middle and lower east rift zone? Is it headed to Mauna Loa? Or is it headed right to here? I don't know. Because the mantle plume conduit should be somewhat vertical. In Hawaii, I'm thinking it could be angled this way. So we could be seeing, and these are at deep depths, guys. Look at some of these depths. 42.5. Here, I went down. Basically, any event that you see right here, although some of them are circles, some of them are diamonds, you can tell, trust me, these are all the DOPHFEs right down here in the past seven days. There have been over 25 of them. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, let's see, what was the deepest one? The deepest one, I 53 kilometers in depth. Wow, that is very deep, guys. Very, very deep. Let's go down. Anything deeper than that? Nope, I think that was the deepest event, 53 kilometers. So let's zoom back to Hawaii. So we have seen an increase in activity somewhat at Mauna Loa. In my opinion, I am wondering if the magma is headed to the Mauna Loa Reservoir. Let me know what you think below. But again, we were going to take a look at this. So in the past seven days of all magnitudes for the whole island of Hawaii, and I'm going to show you just Kilauea on the HBO website. For the whole island of Hawaii, they're saying only 80 earthquakes occurred of all magnitudes in the past seven days. Well, take a look at this. This is the past seven days of all magnitudes, but for Kilauea and the flank and the uh, the east rift zone right here. It is not for the whole island. It is not for the whole big island of Hawaii, guys. So on the earthquake website, they say for the whole big island of Hawaii, there have only been 80 earthquakes in the past seven days. On the USGSHVO website, they say just for the Kilauea area, there have been 244 in the past seven days. What? Wait a second. So HVO is USGS. However, why are they not reporting all of these earthquakes on the USGS website? You notice that? That has me very confused. I don't even know why. And it's not because they're hiding anything, because they obviously show it right here. But HVO is reporting far far more earthquakes than USGS is, even though HVO is USGS. <laughs> and these deep events right here are the DLPHFEs. Let's see, going down. Now, I want to show you something for Mauna Loa. Let's go to Mauna Loa just real quick, shall we? Okay. Let's really quick go to the alert that was posted on, it's their monthly update. It was on May 3rd, so that was a long time ago. That was, I'm going to say, I think that was 18 days ago. A long time ago. There's a slight increase in the number of detected earthquakes in Mauna Loa over the past month. Small earthquakes, mostly less than 2.0, continued in long active areas, including beneath the northwest flank, summit region, and east flank. The largest earthquake for Mauna Loa over the past month was a 3.4 event on May 1st. Okay, let me show you something. Let's go to data for the past month. See how seismic activity is progressing. Again, look at 345 for the past month for the past week for Mauna Loa alone shows 101 earthquakes. For Mauna Loa alone, that number is much greater than what they're reporting on earthquake.usgs.gov. So if you want to see pretty much the true seismicity count for Hawaii volcanoes, I suggest going to the USGS Volcano Hazard Program website, volcanos.usgs.gov. At least they have a much more accurate count of earthquakes on this website. More accurate than we're going to see on earthquake.usgs.gov. Most of them are shallow because the reservoir in Mauna Loa is pretty shallow. Just doesn't seem to be much of a pattern. Maybe increasing right there. Don't know for sure. 
But check this out. Let's go to the past month for Mauna Loa. Okay. Interesting. Look at that. It dipped down right about here. And then it seems like right when those DOPHFEs returned, those deep tremor events, we did see a spike in seismicity. That's very interesting. Now let's look at the past year and how it totals over the whole past 365 days. In the past 365 days, there have been supposed to be 2,481 earthquakes. That's a good amount for a year. Look at that. There's a spike right during, what is that? I'm going to say October, late October. Look at that. You can see, notice right here, it is increasing. Seismicity overall is increasing for Mauna Loa. So I am wondering if this is going to lead to another eruption. I don't know if it'll happen soon. I doubt it'll happen too soon, but the seismicity is gradually increasing along with the swelling of the ground. And yes, uplift is occurring at Mauna Loa. Let's take a look at the GPS data just real fast. All right, here we are in Microsoft Excel with data obtained from UNR, University of Nevada, Rito, uh, Geodetic Laboratory, and A12 reference frame. So the motion of the North American plate is removed. And MLSP, that's the Mauna Loa Summit. This is at the Mauna Loa Summit in Hawaii. I'm going to take a look at deformation from January 1st, 2018 through today, May 21st, 2019. So that's about almost a year and a half worth of data, right? All the way down, select that entire row, which will show delta U, which will show uplift subsidence and will prove whether the ground is inflating or deflating. Let's see. Okay, so let's scoot this down just a tad, just real quick. And let me fix this real fast. There we go. Again, this is MLSP, which is on the Mauna Loa Summit. You can look that up yourself. I'll leave a link to the uh, station map showing all the stations in the world, the GPS stations. Okay, this is from January 1st, 2018 through today, May 21st, 2019. We see uplift was sort of barely, just barely occurring. But right around here, I'm going to say maybe October maybe right around the eru when the eruptions calmed right around when the eruptions calmed in 2018 we see uplift did increase and you can see that right here this is delta u uplift subsidence i know this chart is not properly labeled however this does show the same data let's go all the way up just to show you one more time mlsp and a12 from unr and we see once again that uplift is occurring greater than it has during the 2018 eruptions of Kilauea. So, magma is definitely coming into the Mauna Loa Reservoir, guys. So, and we have seen, we have seen a good increase in earthquakes lately. So, it's interesting to note the increase in seismicity is coupled with the increase of inflation, showing there's definitely a lot of magma coming into Mauna Loa, preparing for the next eruption. I don't know when that'll be. I can't tell the future, but... So that's it right now for Hawaii, guys. Let's move on to the west coast of the United States. Here we are on my website. Again, a link will be provided in the description box below. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you this just real fast. Oregon earthquakes. Remember, there's a magnitude 4.2 right here in the Blanco Fracture Zone. And then there's a magnitude 3.6 in the locked area of the Cascadia Subduction Zone. And my friend Mike M. posted a comment on this blog post. And you can see that if you go to Seismoblog on my website. See, Seismoblog right there. And I have to agree with him. It is it has me a little cautious that this magnitude 3.6. Well, I mean, it's a small earthquake, generally. It's relatively a small earthquake. Many, many people felt it all across the area. I believe it was at 42.4 kilometers in depth, which is a pretty good depth, guys. Uh, yeah, so... This earthquake occurred, and it does have me, and especially Mike, am a little cautious as to what this means. Not saying a major earthquake is coming, guys, but we did have a ongoing ETS event. This shows the ETS event from, I believe, yeah, May 16th through May 18th, 2019. You can see it was concentrated right down here. The magnitude 3.6 occurred right up here. Very interesting, guys. Very interesting. And right here is a pot or three plots, excuse me, of tectonic tremor. This is confirmed to be low-frequency, non-volcanic tectonic tremor. Notice that? That's a far, that's a little bit of a di more distant station, same time, same date. Notice the increases of energy correlate with surrounding stations, showing it's real. 
And then there's a 3.0 in the UK. But you can check that out if you come to this blog post here. Let's go to the earthquake site real quick. All right, during the past seven days there, there has been some good seismicity, a little bit of seismicity near Mount St. Helens, a few quakes near Mount Rainier, very, very tiny quakes though. Um, actually, an earthquake at Mount Hood. Mount Hood rarely sees earthquakes. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Over here near the Hanford Nuclear Area, there's a 2.4 at 22 kilometers in depth. Apparently, there are fault lines in this area. I didn't know that. I just recently found out about that. So that's pretty interesting. And there's also one earthquake near Newberry Caldera. I looked at it. I don't think it is a low-frequency earthquake. Usually, they've been having a lot of low-frequency events down near Newberry Caldera, which is a volcano in central Oregon just south of Bend. Now, we, I'm going to take a look at three earthquakes, seismic data for three earthquakes. There's this strange earthquake here in northeastern Oregon. I rarely see earthquakes appearing here ever. I'm going to turn on U.S. faults. You can tell there are faults in this area. But still, it is somewhat noteworthy because I rarely ever see earthquakes occurring here at all. On May 17, 2019, at 2232 UTC, a magnitude 2.1. Struck at 7.5 kilometers in depth, just 13 kilometers southwest of La Grande. Please forgive me if I said that wrong. Is it La Grande or La Grande? Man, you guys know I'm terrible at pronouncing new words, guys. Oregon. Okay, right near that, La Grande. And Union. And I-84? Is that I-84? I think it is. Okay, let's check out the seismic data, shall we? Let's go to the event page. It doesn't look like anybody felt this earthquake, and likely nobody did. It was pretty small. Of course, people have felt magnitude 2.2s many times in the past, but I think it was just too sparse of a population in the area and too small of an earthquake. Arrival time. UMAT in the UW network, broadband vertical. We'll use that one right now. All right, so here we have the magnitude 2.2, which occurred on May 17th, right before the end of the UTC day. Here it is right here. Supposedly, it's 7.5 kilometers in depth, I believe they said. Let's go to the spectrogram. Looks like a normal tectonic event. Very normal, high range frequencies. Actually, the frequencies are strongest in the middle. Let's take a look at the spectra plot. See what the strongest frequencies are. Yep, right in the middle. Perfect, perfect. Pretty much. Let's see, go to 55. Let's see how high the frequencies go, actually. Wow, yeah, they go up to 40. Yep, normal high frequency event. These waves that you see down here are very, very low frequency, and they're filtered out because I put a 1 hertz high-pass filter. Let's take off the high-pass filter so you can see these events. Let's zoom all the way out. These are surface waves from a very distant, very large earthquake. Possibly the earthquake in New Caledonia that recently happened. They had a couple sixes down there, I believe. Magnitude sixes will basically, in those areas, show like this and have Rayleigh and Love waves which are surface waves, appear like this. At least in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm sticking with, guys. Because the frequencies are too low to be anything local at all. I mean, look at how spread out those waveforms are. Let's see. From one peak, let's see, 20, 23, 26, 04, 23, 26, 20. Wow. That's almost 20 seconds. Let's look at the frequencies and see how low the dominant frequencies are. Let's see. Dominant frequencies peak at about 0 0.05 hertz. Yeah, those are definitely Rayleigh or Love waves from a global distant earthquake. Frequencies are very low. Now, let's go check out the other event. So I just wanted to real quick show you the real-time tremor map. And I'll leave a link to that in the description box below as well. Actually, I believe it's already under resources in the description box. Notice in the past three hours, there have only been 0 0.3 hours of tremor. The real-time tremor map can pick up false detection. So if you usually see one event by itself, in one area basically it's an error usually however when you see bunches like this let me show you yeah that's possibly ETS definitely ETS down here but overall we're only seeing small bursts in ETS here here and here it, it a couple days ago it was a lot worse guys it was popping off like crazy and then that 3.6 happened and then it kept going for a little bit, and then it calmed down. So I think that magnitude 3.6 was related to the ETS, and it struck in the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Don't know exactly what that means. I hope it's not bad, but I don't know. I'm just being a little cautious. But again, the past 48 hours, the past two days, there have only been 11.7 hours of tectonic tremor. Very interesting. That's pretty low compared to how it was not too long ago. 
However, the summer 2019 ETS event is likely just around the corner. Notice we have two earthquakes here, right here near Ocean Shores in Aberdeen, right down here, magnitude 3.4, which people did report viewing. Then up here we have magnitude 2.5, which nobody reported viewing. The magnitude 2.5 struck on May 20th, 2019 at 2035 UTC. Again, it was a 2.5 at 37 kilometers in depth. That's a pretty good depth, guys. Pretty good depth. Magnitude 3.4 near Ocean Shores at 34 kilometers in depth. Very close, guys. A little bit more shallow, but very close to the 2.5 up here. I'm believing the processes are related. All of this is connected to the coming ETS event. That is my opinion. And I think this summer 2019 tectonic tremor and slip event is going to be pretty strong. I'm making a prediction right now. I know we're not supposed to do that in science. Well, actually, technically you are supposed to make theories and predictions somewhat. <laughs> but I'm going to make a prediction. This coming summer 2019 episodic tremor and slip event is going to be crazy. It's going to act weird like it already is. It's already acting strange. It's going to act very weird, but there's going to be a lot of tremor, guys. A lot of tremor. Don't know where it's going to start. Don't know where it's going to end. Don't know what it's going to lead to. But I think it's going to be pretty dang crazy. Possibly the craziest ETS event ever seen. I don't know. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. We'll take a look at the magnitude 3.4 first. Let's go here. Go to the event page. See how many people reported feeling it. 25. And by the Did You Feel It map, it sees that sh uh, we see the shaking is pretty weak. So obviously no damage or anything like that to any structures whatsoever. It was a 3.4 and it was pretty, pretty deep too. So let's go to origin. I don't think anybody from the Seattle area felt it. I don't think so. But you never know. With deeper events, they travel farther. So you never know. Now, I don't like to use strong motion channels, so we'll use the second, actually, no, wait, the fourth, excuse me, we'll use the fourth closest station. Arrival time is 7.4 seconds on that station, so we'll still get a very good look at this earthquake. All right, guys, here we have Seismic Station NLWA, which is the fourth closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.4 at 34 kilometers in depth near Ocean Shores, Washington, on the west coast of the United States. Since this is a broadband station, I added a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 6th power. I'm going to press OK. All right. We could probably see this is the earthquake right here. Uh, let's see. What time did it occur? Let's see. Yes, 11.11. Notice it says at 11.11. That's very interesting. Okay. So we see that's occurring. But notice there's something else. Now look on the helicorder. Notice how something is increasing, right? Notice how it seems to get bolder and bolder here. Let me try to draw down the strength just a little bit so you can see. Draw it down. Notice that? Barely looks like anything up here. And some type of background tremor seems to be occurring, but it might not be background tremor. I was thinking maybe it's uh, some type of tectonic tremor that is possible because look at these, look at these events. They're not super, they, they don't have very, very low frequencies like microseisms would. Keep going over, keep going over. Look at this right here. This is very, very interesting. Now, I do not know for sure if this is ETS. Other ones I am able to identify as tectonic tremor. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Because remember, I'm still not a professional yet. But if we look up here, it seems to be weaker up here than it is down here, if it'll let me. If it'll let me. Come on, guys. My computer is glitching. And notice it is increasing a little bit. So I'm unsure if, that's, if that is tectonic tremor or not. I will definitely keep an eye on it, and I will study it. But here is the magnitude 3.4 at 34 kilometers in depth. Here are the waveforms right here. A downgoing P wave, which shows, well, what did, what was that? Oh, I think the down, downward going P wave shows dilata dilatation, right? Dilatation, I believe that's what it's called. On the PNSN website, let's take a look. Here we are at the moment tensor for the magnitude 3.4 that occurred in Aberdeen and Ocean Shores. Down first motion, which is a downwards going P wave, shows dilatation. Yes, that is what I thought. Upwards motion shows compression. And you can see how it's pretty much how it's shown right there. And LWA, the station we're using, is right here. Notice how it's showing downwards first motion, dilatation, and it's right here. And that's what we were just looking at right here. This seems to be definitely related to the ongoing ETS event or the coming ETS event. And there it is one more time. Let's go back to the spectrogram, take a closer look. 
see what the dominant frequencies of this event are. Let's go to the spectral plot, log power, log frequency off. We see a mid-range, actually a mix of frequencies, guys. Look at this. It seems to be strongest in the lower frequency band, but it seems to go down from there. Obviously, it's not a low frequency earthquake. I mean, take a look at the spectrogram, guys. I mean, just because it has dominant low frequencies doesn't necessarily mean it's a low frequency earthquake. For example, there could be an earthquake with extreme strength going past 25 hertz, right? But sometimes it could be stronger in that lower frequency band, but still be a high frequency earthquake. Trust me, you can tell the difference between a low frequency earthquake and a high frequency earthquake. It's, it took me a while to learn, guys. It took me a while to learn, but if you analyze daily data in the seismic program swarm, you'll get to know how to do that very fast. Now we're going to take a look at the seismic data for this one right here near Nia Bay, Washington State. And again, I live right here in Washington State. Woohoo! Go Bothell! Woohoo! Magnitude 2.5 at 37 kilometers in depth. Again, nobody reported feeling it. The best and soonest arrival time we could get was 5 seconds. That's pretty good. So we'll use borehole 004 in the PB network. Uh, short period vertical, no location code. Let's use that now. Now again, this is a borehole in the PB network. And this station has been seeing some weird events as of late. I just want to show you these with some lower frequencies. I mean, the station is a borehole, so it's underground. Um, I mean, if something strong enough, like a very, very, very strong convoy or... I don't know, guys. I really don't understand this because these events are not showing on surrounding stations. And that trumps everything, literally. If it doesn't show on surrounding stations at all, and it only shows on one station, 98% of the time, it's not a real seismic event. But there are exceptions. There are sometimes exceptions to that. But to me, I, I don't even know what these could be. I, I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't have the know-how to tell you whether this is a seismic event or not. But just use the surrounding stations as a guide. And they don't really show on surrounding stations at all. So I'm just going to skip those for right now. I don't know what to make of those. Here is the magnitude 2.5 near Nia Bay. Very, very strange. Look, we see compression. Upwards going P wave right there. But look at how weird this earthquake is. Very, very strange. Very, very strange. Well, it doesn't look that strange on the spectrogram, but the waveforms are odd. I'm going to cut the waveforms just a little bit. Go to, let's go to 9,000. Just to cut the amplitudes, just so we can see the smaller activity a little bit. There we go. Very, very weird. That is so weird. Sorry to repeat myself, guys, but again, that is pretty weird. There's the spectrogram of it. Let's see the dominant frequencies. Dominant high range frequencies, normal tectonic event, unless this was an explosion. But I don't think this was an explosion. But here we see some strong lower frequencies. But of course, this was not a low frequency event. You can see strength of many other frequency ranges. So, normal high frequency event. Very interesting. And something else very interesting I wanted to look uh, at with you guys is right here on the Canadian border where I personally have never seen any earthquakes. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. We have three earthquakes, a magnitude 2.4, 2.9, and a 2.2. The 2.4 was not felt, and it was at 4.7 kilometers in depth. The 2.9 was not felt either, it was at 14 kilometers in depth. And the 2.2 was not felt either, and it was at 7.3 kilometers in depth. Let's see. Since they were bunched together in somewhat of a tight space, we can use the closest seismic station to the event in the middle. Just want to see what is causing these events and what they look like, just real quick. 11.4 RV, okay. Okay, and I have a high-pass filter enabled, 1 hertz to the 8th power, press OK. All right, so we've got the closest seismic station in the RV network to these events. Remember, there are two on the 20th. We see many, many, many events right here. However, take a look at this. There are frequencies of all ranges. These are not earthquakes. These are not even tremor. In my opinion, this looks like either surface noise or some type of electronic malfunction. It looks a little bit too perfect to be surface noise, which is why I'm saying it's an electronic malfunction. But it also looks a little too natural to be an electronic malfunction. I am unsure. You guys can check out the, this right here. This, these are definitely electronic malfunctions right here. You can tell. Yeah, definitely. Kind of looks like a heartbeat. Isn't that weird? Okay, so let's find the earthquake, shall we? Let's see. It occurred at 2020 something, right? 2039 was the first one for the earthquakes in Canada near the Montana-Canada border. Here it is right here. Yep, normal high-range frequencies. Lasted a little bit longer than what I would expect, but it looks like a normal tectonic earthquake. 
Let's go forward an hour later, right? Almost an hour later. I'm going to say something like that. Let's see, is this it right here? Yes, it is. Here it is. Right here is the second one, which was bigger. I believe a 2.4, they said. We see the P wave seems to... I don't know. Downwards going P wave, maybe. But it seems to just barely go up right there. So I don't know whether that's showing dilatation or compression. <coughs> Remember, guys, I'm still not a professional at this stuff. But I am actively learning. And then the next one occurred at 9-something UTC the next day. Let's see. 9 UTC. Where are you? Yep, 9.22 UTC. That was it right there. Let's see. And here it is right here. Very strange looking earthquakes. Kind of strange looking. But looks like a normal tectonic event to me. Well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Again, this video was just chat with bad fairy olo <laughs> just kidding guys but really though there are two different uh videos that i create ones that are scripted that i try to contain more into information in and others where like this one that i call uh just chatting with ben just talk about normal stuff you know not it's not scripted at all it's just normal run-of-the-mill talking i know i blabber on a little bit when i don't script my stuff but yeah you know it's okay so let me know what you think about the ETS events. Why are they acting so erratic and so sporadic lately? Just acting so weird. And then we had that 3.6, or excuse me, that 4.2 off the coast of Oregon uh, along the Blanco Fracture Zone. And then not too long later, we had the magnitude 3.6 in the locked section of the Cascadia Subduction Zone. To me, that shows that something may be shifting a little more than usual. And then we had, what was it, 3.4 near Aberdeen and Ocean Shores, and then a 2.5 near Nia Bay, almost in a straight line. If you look at all those three earthquakes, it's almost a straight line along the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Could the Cascadia Subduction Zone get, be getting ready for a rupture? Maybe, maybe not. I, can't, I cannot say if it is or if it isn't. Personally, I believe it will happen in my lifetime. That's just my personal opinion, though. I'm not telling you guys what to think. However, it is very interesting how it's been acting lately. But the summer 2019 ETS event, remember I made a prediction, it's going to be crazy. Very crazy. Also in Hawaii, Mauna Loa is continually seeing uplift. So is the Lower East Rift Zone. Uh, GPS station Joka is showing that especially. However, for the Lower East Rift Zone itself, seismicity has been quite low. Very, very strange how low it has been for how much uplift is occurring. However, with Mauna Loa, we see the ground is steadily rising. It is steadily showing uplift along with a steady increase in seismic activity. Could those deep tremor events that I like to call DOPHFEs, could they be signaling mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit? Well, that's what a couple professionals thought it was too. And I came up with that idea with very limited knowledge, because I'm not a professional, I haven't gone to school yet. I came up with that theory with very limited knowledge and very limited resources. And I apparently I was right, they think I'm correct. But the thing is, I'm not the first one to talk about this stuff. I mean, they've been doing publications on these deep tremor events in Hawaii for, like, I'm going to say maybe 30, 40 years. So it's been well known since, like, the 80s that these deep tremor events have been occurring. However, they have been showing quite a large resurgence as of late, if you know what I mean. And right here we have stations from Yellowstone. All these are from Yellowstone except the last three. These last three right here are from Hawaii. So, guys, that is it. Let me know what you think about just chatting with Ben Ferriolo. Oh, and please add me on Facebook, guys. You know my name, my YouTube channel name? Just type that in on Facebook and come find me. And, I, I, you know, I don't really like Facebook. I really don't like what they've been doing, especially with silencing conservatives and stuff like that. But I kind of had to create one. I kind of had to create one for another source for my research and to get in touch with some of my older friends that I haven't talked to in a long time. And... Also, for my future career, you know, because uh, people who employ, they do look at Facebook accounts, sadly. They do. So, make sure your Facebook account is in tip-top shape. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. I had fun. God bless. See you later. And remember, the truth is considered hater fear to those who hater fear the truth. See you later, guys.